into the communities that General Order 156 was designed to serve, then uh, it's similar to what President Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. And that audit function is our ability to verify that those numbers are going in the right place. And I think this is... Uh, you know, I don't want to engage in reverse redlining because uh, you know, my, my uh, companion for 16 years, and, and the love of my life, Kimberly Brandon, she sits on the San Francisco Report Commission. And uh, before I went into public service, I would go to report commission meetings. Uh, I was dating her at the time, and I was just trying to keep an eye on her. Because she was sort of to it, and you know, many of you know who they were better and everything. But one thing I noticed, at that time, Mayor Willie Brown was the mayor of San Francisco. And Mayor Willie Brown, he's like, he said, I don't care if it's Prop 209 or Prop 909, there's not going to be any advancement of infrastructure in this city unless there are minority firms and African-American firms as a part of that process. He was sued. Uh, uh, there were efforts made to try to derail that, but I will say in the eight years that he was mayor, I think he did an admirable job in advancing that. And I learned a lot from that, by the way. I took a page out of his book, a page out of Maxine Waters, Congressman Maxine Waters' book, and others that I have seen win more, as I've mentioned, on how you can advance the interests of the underserved through capitalism. But one thing I noticed is that when the project was awarded, there would be the minority on the team. There would be the African American on the team. But by the time there was groundbreaking, they weren't around. <coughs> Why? Because they didn't have the access to capital. They didn't have the access to bonding. Bonding, as I look at Ingrid Merriweather and, 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 and Regina from Bernita, excuse me, from Mary Brother Williams. Um, they didn't have access to the right type of financial products, the right types of mechanisms that made it possible for them to stay in the game. So what usually would happen is they would buy, they would be bought out. They had to be, you know, because they because we still lack in the marketplace those products and mechanisms that levelize the playing field. And that's where my interest is now is what can we do to ensure that the companies that are a part of the awards that will occur as a part of this amazing high-speed rail project or our other high-speed rail project have the kind of support, have the kind of platform in place that they can remain competitive throughout the process. Because that lack of access is historic. It is systemic. It was built into our nation. I'm not a radical, I'm a Republican, but I just believe in the truth. Uh, Malcolm X was interviewed at, at UC Berkeley uh, back in 1962. And uh, that interview was on YouTube, by the way. I think it was 62. And he said that America, the laws of America were formed by white men for white men. And they were. I mean, that's just the way it was back then. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to make anybody feel uncomfortable. But when you have a nation that was founded on that paradigm, then it takes a lot of work to unwind that. And I mean a lot more than Brown versus Board of Education. And that's what we're here about. Because in my now seven years of public service, what I have found is that if you take your eye off that needle for one minute, it goes back to the status quo. It just reverts right back. Because the system was structured that way. And we have the difficult job of trying to redesign that system. And I would say often from a position of, of, of disadvantage, and that's where I come in. That's where the commission comes in. Because we approve those crossings. And if those crossings aren't approved, no project. Now while rail doesn't come under General Order 156, whether I'm on that commission or not, it'll be my job to make sure that the commission and its function as a safety regulator, I can't, you know, I can't call Paul if I'm not on the commission for a year, but I'll send a carrier pigeon or something <laughs> to say that you can't have a project that is so vital to this community if this community is not engaged in the development of that project. And that's the way it's going to be. So this is a $9 billion project stretching over 186 miles. It's the Federal Railroad Administration is the lead agency for the Desert Express Rail Project. We have about 52 uh, 
rail companies in the state that, that, that we regulate. And um, I know you're going to hear a lot about it today. I don't want to take up any more of the, you know, this very valuable time that you have to advance business. But let me just say this, that I think where we are in terms of General Order 156, it does not touch this project. Uh, there was an effort by Steve Bradford to expand uh, G156 into rail, and the final bill just, uh, for whatever reasons, did not include it. But um, I, I think where we are in terms of this issue of supplier diversity, uh, this issue of the changing demographic of our nation, the changing demographic of the state, the, the change of that demographic that re-elected our president, Barack Hussein Obama, is that Will we continue to advance this mechanism in a way that's going to bring benefits to the communities that it was designed to serve? Or will it be a mechanism that's going to bring benefits to the majority businesses? And that's the trend that I'm concerned about. I know, don't get me wrong, I'm a securities attorney. I support joint ventures. I've worked in mergers and acquisitions. I've been involved in public offerings. And I know that capital is capital is capital. And the last thing I want to do is to see what I call a reverse red line, where you can't tap into the equity capital that you need to maintain competitiveness. But at the same time, it has to be a balance, you know, so that we're not having a situation where majority firms are simply utilizing minority firms to get a piece of the portion of that pie and unfortunately it has to be allocated but again because of that systemic history we have to allocate a certain portion and we want to make sure we have that balance we want to make sure that the companies that will be involved in the design and the build and the operation of this amazing project i am i can't wait to ride on it because i just love going to las vegas and i, and I just can watch when i think about being able to ride on a train and, and you know, kind of get to Vegas the way you like to get to Vegas. Uh, you know, I, and, that, and, the, and the rest has to stay in Vegas. But you know, I'm extremely excited. But I, I, I want to caution the, the, the city mothers and fathers here, the other uh, individuals who will be part of the oversight of this project. Let's make certain. Let's do our level best to make sure that this transformative project will bring the opportunities to the families that may not have had this opportunity. Yes, we want to protect the middle class, we don't want the middle class to fall through the bubble, but let's make a commitment by way of this project to help lift people up, the working poor, the impoverished, so that they can experience the American dream by way of projects of this nature. And this includes Paul Smart Grid, our pipeline uh, enhancement and, and, and safety programs, the development of, of safer pipelines, uh, our various renewable energy projects that are out there, the potential relicensing of our nuclear facilities. This is all intertwined. We have to make certain that if we're going to be successful, that we are a part of this. So God bless you and, and, and thank you for your vision of this great project. And I look forward to working with the African American Chamber and other organizations, whatever capacity I can, going forward, and our greater days are yet to come. God bless you, and thank you very much. Uh, just, just a little housekeeping, and uh, I say this with all words. It's, it's like catching lightning in a bottle to have someone that advocates for the issues that are so near and dear to us. It doesn't just simply happen by osmosis. It happens because people, like the people in this room, said they wanted to have it. Commissioner Simon, I say to California, and I am truly honored to be able to join my comrades in giving you this award. 